This is One on One. Welcome to The Daily Show. I'm Trevor Noah. And we are continuing our run of specials featuring the individuals that make up the best news team. With me tonight is our very own Desi Lattic. Desi, I'm excited for you. Oh, thank you. What, what would you say has been your uh, greatest achievement being at The Daily Show? Uh, probably not giving birth on air. Pretty proud of myself for that. Wait, you were really pregnant? Yeah, no, I was really pregnant. You don't I, remember that? I thought it was like a stunt. I thought it was like a long con you were playing. No, that would be a very, very long con. Yeah, I was like, that's with, what makes it impressive. With very little payoff. Wow, so you have a baby now? Yeah, yeah. Huh, well, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there she is. Uh, I'm not pregnant. I am not pregnant anymore. This is PBS. I hope we, not. We don't joke about these I'm things. I'm going to leave here and I'm going to go take a test right now just to be sure. Please do. I'm not. Desi Lydic is correspondent with a great show called The Daily Show with that guy. Trevor, Trevor. Noah. And that guy is really good as well. How are you it's doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm great. You are causing trouble. There yeah. is buzz about you everywhere because? Because I'm mostly almost getting arrested everywhere I go. For what, what, are you, what are you doing? So I think... I mean, I, I think they just, for, for a good portion of the show, I was pregnant. And I think they just thought, send the pregnant girl out. She's white, she's pregnant, she can get away with anything. So they would send me into the dangerous situations. Like, like, trying, like trying to go to the NRA convention and filming inside, which we up. were not credentialed to do. The National Rifle yes. Association, my cold, dead hands. Yep. Yeah. You go there yeah. to engage people in, in an interesting dialogue. Interesting conversation. Such as? Uh, and we, the entire piece ended up being about the fact that I couldn't get in to the event. They wouldn't, it was easier to actually buy a handgun than it was to get into the NRA convention if Why you have a camera. We had our cameras. I, they knew we were up to no good. We're stirring up trouble. Is it, were you there to stir up trouble or to just actually find out what people are really thinking? We were trying to find out what people were really thinking. So, uh, have you, did you have fun during the 2016 presidential campaign? Until election night, it was super fun. Well, what, what changed on election night? It, uh, well, you know, we have Trump as president now. Well, hold on, wait we a minute. We didn't you... see this coming. No, well, hold on. It's a joke. The whole Trump presidency? No, no, no. But oh. are, are you, I want to be clear. It's, it, is it news? Is it fake news? Is it, you're, you're doing humor. We are doing here. We are not legitimate journalists. We should not be trusted. Okay, but as you were leading up to the campaign, you were having fun with it. Yes. Did it change on election night and it was no more fun for you? Well, no, it's still fun. It's, still, it's always fun. I mean, now we just, it's, it's the hardest thing about what we do now is keeping up with all of the chaos day to day. We never thought that we would have this much volume of chaos. Or always, always, always tons of material. Tons of jokes to pull from. Okay, do you mind if we take another? What do we have, team? I'm gonna, uh, talking with Donald Trump supporters and finding out why they are such fervent aficionados of President Trump. Take a look. I traveled to the heartland of America, Bel Air, California, to meet with the Trump supporter with real insight. Average American voter, Tony Holt Kramer. Trump is, in his own way, a blue-collar candidate. I mean, he appeals to the people. Mm. As founder of the Trumpettes, a grassroots organization started by women who support Trump, Tony is the one who can best explain his appeal. He is Superman in a lot of ways. You know, he's this blonde, blue-eyed guy flying around up in the air right now, looking down and going, I can't stand this country the way it is. I've yeah. got to fix it. When you watch that, what mm. goes through your mind? Uh, how can you possibly have this point of view. But I, Tony's my girl. I loved Tony Holt Kramer. We got along very well. I actually, the first thing that went through my mind was how do you afford a house like this? Because it was decadent. It was beautiful. But you talked to these women, in mm -hmm. all seriousness, who were, they were not joking. They believe no. in the president. They're big supporters. And as we do this program in the spring of 2017, I'm sure they're just uh, as supportive. Did you let them know what you thought, or were you just asking questions? I was just asking questions. I, I, it was, you know, we, our show is to poke holes in certain hypocrisies, and so a lot of it was asking questions. Giving and them facts. Giving them facts and delivering jokes and trying to 
see what her thoughts were on some of those things. Um, but it, 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 was, it was interesting. I, I was sitting across from her and I did not agree with much of what she had to say, but I liked her as a human being mm. and I think she has really good intentions and we wanted a lot of the same things in life and from our country. You so, like Trump? Do I like him? Yeah. You uh, like her? Do you like him? Well, I don't like what he's doing with our country. I, I was not a Trump supporter. I'm not a Trump supporter. Maybe if I sat across from him, there might be some commonality, but I'm not a huge fan. Do you think he gets the joke? No. Why not? I don't think he has humility. I don't think he, I don't think his ego allows him to laugh at himself. He, you're saying he doesn't understand what's funny about his, Him. himself. Right. Which we all have ridiculous things about ourselves. Sure. Including. Some. I yes. mean, I don't. Yeah, of course I don't you have don't. Any, yes. No, I'm, That's you know, I, I wouldn't. You're perfect. No. But, but the reality is that is part of it for you, isn't it? And that's what makes it funnier is that he doesn't get, and Trevor has a field day with that as well. Oh, yeah. There's nothing funnier than poking fun at someone who has no sense of humor about themselves. Do you think, and we were talking about this right before we got on the air, and I'm fascinated by the Trump presidency on so many levels. Um, do you think he knows who you guys are and what you do at Comedy Central? I don't think his ego would allow him to watch our show. We're too ruthless for him. Ruthless? I think so. I well, mean, well, there's yeah. Saturday Night Live. Yeah, but that's, uh, you know, you got Alec Baldwin doing a, an impression of him. He goes, oh, someone's doing an impression of me. I got to see this. I'll, I'll be the judge of whether that's good, not good, terrible, sad, you know? That's different. Maybe if, maybe if we started doing, like, a, yeah. a full-on impression of him, he might tune in. Okay. Uh, you grew up in? Louisville, Kentucky. You told me right before we got on the air that there is some sort of connection between Louisville, Kentucky, and my home state of mm -hmm. New Jersey across the river. I'm curious. Well, a lot... <clears throat> a lot of people, when I meet them for the first time in this sort of scenario, go, oh, you're from New Jersey. I say, no, I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. And I remembered one of the first jobs that I ever did was called, they, they had this idea to do a show inspired by the movie The Wedding Crashers. It was called yes. The Real Wedding Crashers. And they wanted me to put together a, a bio. So I wrote this like very straight bio, grew up in Louisville, Kentucky, started acting at this age, well, whatever, whatever. And they go, yeah, can you do this again, but just make it funny? So I literally took Meryl Streep's bio, you know, nominated for an Academy Award 14 times from Summit, New Jersey. <clears throat> it was on this one website on NBC. Right. And since then, it's been almost impossible to erase. There's no, no connection between, they didn't get the Meryl Streep thing, but just now people think I'm from Summit, New Jersey. It, it was a joke. It was a joke. They didn't get the joke. Well, it, yeah, it, 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 it fell flat. But in all, the serious part is, when did you know you wanted to be, I don't even want to say in the business, but act? I grew up in a house that loved SNL, and my dad would watch these reruns of The Carol Burnett Show, and I was obsessed with sitcoms growing up, and I think I, we, we laughed a lot. We told a lot of jokes, and... I think I always knew that I wanted to try that, but growing up in Louisville, Kentucky, that wasn't a thing. People didn't go, oh, you're gonna move to LA and act or go to New York and be on The Daily Show. Um, but at 19, I moved from Louisville, Kentucky to LA and I just started from scratch. I started doing background work and I got into improv and I realized that that's what I like to do. And, uh, and I was a huge fan of The Daily Show with Jon Stewart when it was on the air. I would watch religiously, and that was always a dream. You got it right away, and it connected for you, I, with you. I loved it. I just thought it looked like they were having so much fun. And I thought that what they were doing was kind of important. Are, are you political, per se? I mean, I grew up in a very Republican household. So is the that fact true? that I'm working on this show right now is tough when I go home for holidays. You catch heat? Yeah. Really? Yeah, but they love the show. I mean, they're very supportive of what I'm doing, and they're happy that I'm that I'm there. But we have very different perspectives. Do you? I don't know. Call yourself as a ridiculous expression. Do you mm -hmm. consider yourself a feminist? Yes. But not political. Okay. What makes this show great? Tell everyone who may not know what makes it great. 
Uh, I I think we're just doing a lot of a lot of fun stuff right now. It's Trevor's doing an incredible job. We have a great time together. You know, some things that we do are going to connect with people. Some things aren't. But you know, we just want to talk about what's going on in the world and find a way to laugh about it. You know something? I have a feeling that President Trump may find his way to Comedy Central. You he think may so? actually check out the show. <clears throat> and you would be surprised. He could easily be tweeting about you directly, targeting you, oh. and saying something very, and giving a review on, on your performance. I would love it. You, why would you, you would love that? I would love it. My ego would love it. Because you are a narcissist. Yeah. It takes one to know one. Show business. We are in show business with the PBS brand. Um, <laughs> Desi Lydic. Yes. Who is a correspondent with a terrific show called The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. That guy's career. It's not bad. Not bad. He's doing all right. Thank you so much. Thanks. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health, Delta Dental of New Jersey, Wells Fargo, Bergen Community College, PSE&G, JAG Physical Therapy, and by New Jersey Sharing Network. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.